Thank you, Jill. Uh, <clears throat> so much going on. Uh, uh, Paul, Paul's passing was a big thing for me. Uh, uh, Karen Abney's dad, she's a woman I've been walking with for some years. Her dad was buried on uh, Friday. But you, you know, we're in, we're in the atmosphere of war again. Uh, it's been really 20 years for me. I was reflecting on that and uh, getting ready to, to uh, for today. And so I went back and read a poem I wrote 20 years ago. And uh, it's still good. <laughs> it's still true. I wrote this uh, and I can sort of share the feelings of a lot of Russians that uh, who are gutsy people. I love the Russian people. I love their literature. I spent a lot of time reading uh, the Russian classics in college. I mean, I cried at the end of the Brothers Karamazov. I literally wept. And by that, at that time, I could count the number of times I had cried in my life. Well, I can't anymore, but I wept and I started it over. It was the only, uh, only book actually I ever did that because it was too good. I didn't want it to finish, so I started it over. War and Peace, Anna Karenina, I mean, these people have soul and uh, they have guts when you see people out in the streets saying, hey, we don't like this. And they're going to jail and jail in the Soviet Union or in Russia uh, is no small thing. So I feel for those people and for the Ukrainians, but this is, this, this, you know, it was very hard for me 20 years ago to be sitting here as we went into shock and awe and started bombing uh, the good people of Iraq. Uh, so I sort of remember that and uh, heart goes out to the Ukrainians, of course, and, also Russian people, because uh, this war has got their name on it, and uh, it, it's, it hurts. So I wrote this poem, and I think it's, it's still true to me. It rings true, and, uh, you know, because the thoughts at that time were, what can I do to stop this? You know, because this force is so big, things like war, you know, it's often the would talk to my uh, friends and say, you know, there's three kinds of business. There's God's business, there's your business, and there's my business. And, uh, uh, you know, stress, it's being a human is stressful, but your stress goes up when you try to do somebody else's business other than your own. If you try to do your husband, your wife's business, your kid's business, stress goes up. And then there's God's business, which are these huge things that uh, no one person can stop. No one person can stop the war. We had that iconic picture of the Chinese guy in Tiananmen Square standing in front of the tank. That took some guts. But, um, you know, you can't, you can't put that on your shoulder. But I wrote this. And... Uh, Jonathan Swift was one of my favorites and living in Ireland for a year, I got to really know Swiss writing. And he wrote, a, he wrote something in the, uh, an Irishman uh, living in Ireland during the potato famine when uh, Britain just allowed it to happen. He wrote a modest proposal, which was uh, his view on that. Yeah, where he, he modest proposal uh, you got to read it sometime. It's full of irony. Well, this is not quite that, but I call this a gentle proposal 20 years ago. So what, what can we do? What can I do? Go gently into the streets to protest this war. Go gently into discussions with your neighbor about the price of oil and human life. Go gently into your own kitchen and living rooms, into your schools and workplaces. Go gently into your houses of worship, into your hospitals and, and prisons. Go gently into your opinions of world leaders 
and go gently, ever so gently, into your own mind. Otherwise, what have you really accomplished? If you go with aggression, you may win the battle, but you won't stop the war. For aggression is war. All wars are lost as soon as they begin. So go gently into the very thick and heat of battle. Go gently. And even if your cause does not prevail, there will be more peace in the world than before. So go gently into the very thick of and heat of battle. Go gently and even if your cause does not prevail, there will be more peace in the world than before. Yeah, that, that's still true for me. And the line, uh, well, there's a couple of lines here that really resonate currently. Uh, go gently into discussions with your neighbor about the price of oil and human life. You already hear that on the news. Oh, how is this gonna affect up? Well, the prices might go up at the gas tank. They're not even talking so much about human life, but so we're hearing that. And that was certainly something we heard 20 years ago as we attacked the Middle East. It's funny how things don't change for 20 years. Go gently into your opinions of world leaders. That's a tough, that's a tough one. And uh, the line I think that uh, that is for the whole group today and go gently, ever so gently into your own mind. Otherwise, what have you really accomplished? If you go with aggression, you may win the battle, but you won't stop the war for aggression uh, is war. You know, uh, Dalai Lama uh, is one of my mentors as well. He, he just said, you know, the platform for world peace is inner peace. And so this war that, that we would like to stop, you know, the first, the first step is stop this war inside us. Stop this aggression inside us. If you're feeling hatred of anybody, even Vladimir Putin, we got some work to do, you see. Uh, the, the Cherokee myth of the guy who had the two wolves inside fighting, you know, the white wolf and the black wolf and, you know, that whole thing. And then the wisdom of that, if you know that is, uh, well, who wins? The little boy asked the grandfather. And he said, well, it depends on the wolf you feed, you see. Depends on the wolf you feed. And so we have our work to do, which is, I really think, the first step. And that's that's what uh, this community is about. It's what we can do here. Uh, we can we can root out the fear that's in us. Merton wrote a great essay, if you've never read it. Uh, you can find it in the uh, new, new Seeds of Contemplation, but it's called The Root of War is Fear. And uh, the root of all our, of the inner war is fear. And the opposite of fear is love. And so uh, it's what, I, I'm convinced it's what draws well, people here for this is the fact that you get an infusion of love being in this community. And uh, Gandhi, who, you know, was a warrior, a peaceful warrior, a Gandhi who actually changed a whole subcontinent, uh, he got the uh, the British Empire to leave India 
he had a different way of fighting and people came to join his uh his uh revolution he uh he didn't let them go out and start marching right away uh if you want if you see the film gandhi there's this scene where this young american or so a british woman came from uh, great britain to work with gandhi to get the british empire out of india and uh she wanted to go out and march and he said to no, stay here. Learn how to spin. He had this. He was having people spin their own cloth. You know, the spinning wheel was the symbol of uh, his India. He said, "We can. We don't depend on British cloth. We can make our own cloth. We can stand in our own two feet." So he said, "Spin first, march later." And that was a real interesting image because when you're doing that kind of spinning like they were doing, you have to just be mindful. So it was like, he was like saying, practice calming yourself down first. Practice mindfulness, you see. Then march. Because then you're marching with uh, love, not hate for the British, which would have been pretty hard to do, you see, to not be motivated by hate. So when you talk about, uh, I had a, I talked to a, a young college girl the other day who uh, I was had a Zoom call with her. She goes to school out in Colorado and uh, named her named Lizzie. And she, she was asking me about what I do and uh, uh, and uh, what the spiritual journey is all about, which is very interesting that somebody in college would be interested in that. I certainly wasn't. <laughs> I was interested in the, the, getting a degree and then who knows what, getting married or whatever. But she, she would say, what is the scripture all about? And I, I said, uh, I said, it goes on. And uh, you, the, why you start isn't the, the, what keeps you going on it. I mean, I've been 50 years in this now since I first bought Suzuki's book in 1972. So 50 years, I'm old. But, uh, I said, uh, do, it doesn't matter why you come. That's why I think it really doesn't matter why you, you come uh, here uh, today or any day or why you came two years ago for some of us, but it does matter why you stay. And uh, that's love. And I, and I told her, I said, uh, some of you have been to Loose Leaf Follow. I'm looking at it right now. There's a big German stained glass that came from a Benedictine monastery up in Indiana one day. They, 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 they built it in the 1800s and they were taking out all this uh, stained glass and uh, uh, putting in new ones. And this, it has the omega as the uh, end of the uh, Greek alphabet. And, you know, there's the talk about the alpha and the omega, the beginning and the end. And um, uh, I've often thought, gee, I wish I had the alpha, you know, hanging over on the other side there. It'd be really great. But but what came out in my talk with this young girl was uh, the alpha and the omega are the same in the spiritual journey. Love. Love is the motivation that will keep you going. You, you know, it wasn't the motivation that I started with, but at some point came from, you know, you can call it whatever you call this you want, you know, call it God or call it just the unified field, but somewhere love kept me going on it. Uh, uh, loves the motivation. And at some point it becomes the aspiration. You want to become a person that can bring a little more love into the world. Paul Farmer did. He did it by, you know, if somebody's sick, you heal them. You know, uh, there's so many ways to love people. Somebody's, uh, he really believed in uh, Matthew 25 in the gospel. How do you love, how do you love somebody who's hungry? Well, you feed them. This is really, you know, it's, it's nitty gritty, but to actually that your life gets more and more taken over with. So really, I, I said, you know, really, it's the beginning and the end of this thing. It's, it's at some point if love doesn't come in, if you're doing it out of fear, the way, you know, maybe a lot of us went to church in the old days, you went because, uh, you know, you're afraid not to. Well, hopefully nobody's here for that reason. But we do have parts of us that are still afraid. That's what gets transformed. I said, it's a, it's a trip of total transformation. And the motivation of fear 
eventually gets transformed. Just in the simple act of where we're, we're going next, uh, just the, the simple act of just allowing yourself to just be without thought, without belief even, uh, but in, in faith that, um, you know, these guys that we know, like Paul Farmer, like Thomas Merton, like Dalai Lama, like Pema Chodron, these people all did this in their own way. They all would just sit down and open up to the divine, however they would picture that, but just open up to the love all around them and soak it in. And over time, it would change them. Over time, it did change. That's, we're in that tradition. Uh, Rumi says, open your arms if you want to be held. That's one of the great teachings. You know, open your heart if you want to be loved. And, you know, this is not a meditation posture, you know. <laughs> it just isn't. That's why, you know, we sit. We open up the heart. And we open, you know, unfold your arms. Open your arms if you want to be held. Open your heart if you want to be loved and be loved. You see, that's what we're doing here. So, and that's how you end the war. We need people who are bringing that into the world. There are many of them. Uh, uh, and, I, and, I, and I think we just have to be one of them. We have to the people who end the war inside. That that's one of our goals, to end the fear motivating our life and uh, aspire to let it be love and in some day it will be and you will you will change the other people around you it spreads it spreads so okay we're gonna shift over to meditation position now maybe you need to do that maybe you like to move from your screen to the to another chair or the floor maybe you stay right where you are just sort of straighten up a little bit Take a few breaths. 